Imagine a world without the internet, without instant messaging, without even a basic cell phone, just silence, disconnection, yet somehow, in that primitive digital stone age called the 1980s, every single piece of technology you're using right now was being born. That Walkman your dad kept in a box? It's the reason Spotify exists. That chunky calculator-looking computer? It taught the world how to think digitally. I'm about to show you how forgotten 80s gadgets directly created the 2025 tech you can't live without. And some of these connections will absolutely blow your mind. The Echoes of Innovation Why does 80s tech still matter in 2025? Because innovation isn't about replacing the past, it's about evolving it. Every smartphone feature, every streaming service, every piece of modern technology has DNA from the 1980s embedded in its code. Here's what most people don't understand. The 80s weren't just about creating new gadgets. They were about fundamentally changing how humans interact with technology. Before the 80s, computers lived in office buildings and research labs. Music came from records and radio. Communication meant landlines and letters. Entertainment was scheduled by TV networks. The 80s shattered all of that. For the first time in human history, technology became personal. It moved into homes, into bedrooms, into pockets. The shift from institutional technology to personal technology, that's the revolution nobody talks about. And here's the wild part. We're still living in the world the 80s created. The technology changed. The core concepts, exactly the same. Personal computing, portable entertainment, on-demand content, mobile communication, gaming as a legitimate industry, digital creativity, all born in one explosive decade. This isn't nostalgia. This is understanding where we came from, so we know where we're going. Let's dig in. Analog Antecedents. The Sony Walkman, released in 1979, exploded in the 80s. Looks simple, right? Just a portable cassette player. But this little device completely revolutionized human behavior. Before the Walkman, Music was communal. You listened in your living room, in your car, at concerts. Music was a shared experience. The Walkman made music personal. For the first time ever, you could take your entire music collection anywhere. Create your own soundtrack to life. Shut out the world and exist in your own audio bubble. Sound familiar? That's because it's exactly what AirPods and Spotify do today. The Walkman taught us that music should be portable personal, and on-demand. It created the concept of the personal playlist. You'd spend hours making the perfect mixtape for your morning commute. Streaming services didn't invent personalized music consumption. They just digitized what the Walkman started. Apple didn't invent the concept of music in your pocket. Sony did in 1979. We're still living in the world the Walkman created. We just upgraded the format from magnetic tape to digital streaming. The Walkman sold over 200 million units. It changed fashion. People started dressing around wearing headphones. It changed urban culture. Suddenly, city commutes had a soundtrack. One device, entire culture shifted. Home computers take off. Home computers. The Commodore 64, Apple II, IBM PC. These weren't just new gadgets. They were the moment computing escaped from corporate offices and entered living rooms. The Commodore 64 launched in 1982 for $595. Sounds expensive. It was actually revolutionary. Before this, computers cost tens of thousands of dollars. The C64 made computing accessible to regular families. It sold 17 million units, still the best-selling single computer model in history. But here's what really mattered. These computers taught an entire generation how to think digitally. Kids in the 80s learned to code on these machines. They learned that computers weren't mysterious. They were tools you could control and create with. Those kids, they grew up to build Google, Facebook, Amazon. The entire tech industry runs on people who learned to code on 80s home computers. Without the Commodore 64 and Apple II making computing accessible, there's no Silicon Valley boom, no app economy, no digital revolution. These machines were slow, had terrible graphics, and barely any memory. But they taught the world that computers belonged in homes, that regular people could use them, and that digital literacy was the future. That's the legacy. Gaming's Genesis. Gaming, the Nintendo Entertainment System, the Atari 2600, 
Sega Master System. The 80s turned video games from an arcade novelty into a multi-billion dollar home entertainment industry. The NES launched in North America in 1985, after the great video game crash of 1983. Everyone thought gaming was dead. Nintendo proved them spectacularly wrong. Super Mario Bros. alone sold 40 million copies. The NES revived an entire industry and established gaming as legitimate entertainment. But the real innovation wasn't the graphics or the games, it was the business model. Nintendo created the third-party licensing system. Other companies could make games for Nintendo's console, but Nintendo controlled quality and took a cut. Sound familiar? It's exactly how Apple's App Store works today. The 80s established that gaming could be more profitable than movies. They proved that interactive entertainment was the future. The console wars between Nintendo and Sega taught the tech industry about ecosystem competition, a strategy every tech company uses today. Modern gaming, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, mobile gaming, all of it traces directly back to the 80s. The industry's worth $200 billion in 2025. It started with 8-bit plumbers and pixelated aliens in the 1980s. The graphics improved, the core model unchanged. Connecting the circuits, the VCR. The video cassette recorder revolutionized entertainment in ways we completely take for granted now. Before the VCR, you watched what TV networks decided to show you when they decided to show it. Miss your favorite show? Too bad. Want to watch a movie? Go to a theater. The VCR changed everything. Suddenly, you could record shows and watch them later. Time shifting, they called it. You could rent movies and watch them at home. You could pause, rewind, fast forward through commercials. For the first time ever, viewers controlled their entertainment consumption. Netflix didn't invent binge watching. VCR owners did. They'd record entire weeks of soap operas and watch them back to back. DVR technology? Just a digital VCR? Streaming services? Same concept, cloud-based. The VCR taught entertainment companies a crucial lesson. Consumers want control over when and how they watch content. Hollywood fought VCRS initially. They sued Sony, claiming VCRS would kill the movie industry. They lost. Instead, home video became more profitable than theaters. Every streaming service, every DVR, every on-demand platform exists because the VCR proved that content on demand is what people actually want. The format changed from magnetic tape to digital files. The core concept, watch what you want, when you want, that's pure 1980s innovation. Early mobile communication. The brick phone, the Motorola Dynatac 8000X, launched in 1983 for $3,995. That's about $12,000 in today's money. It weighed two pounds. Battery lasted 30 minutes. It could barely make a phone call without dropping, and it changed the world. Before mobile phones, you were tethered to physical locations. Want to make a call? Find a landline or payphone? Want to reach someone? Hope they're near a phone. The brick phone introduced a revolutionary concept. Communication should be mobile. The Dynataki was terrible by modern standards. Expensive, heavy, limited battery, poor reception. But it proved the concept. People would pay premium prices for mobile communication. They would carry around heavy devices for the freedom of connectivity. Every smartphone advancement, better batteries, lighter materials, more features, is solving problems the brick phone first identified. The iPhone didn't invent mobile communication. It just perfected what Motorola started in 1983. The brick phone established that staying connected anywhere, anytime, was worth the inconvenience and cost. That's the same psychology driving smartphone addiction today. We're still chasing the same dream the 80s brick phone sold us, ultimate connectivity. Digital photography's humble beginnings, digital photography. In 1981, Sony released the Mavica, the first consumer digital camera. It didn't use film. It saved images to a floppy disk. Resolution, 0.3 megapixels. Your phone's front camera has 50 times better quality. But that primitive camera established something crucial. Photographs don't need to be physical. They can be data. They can be stored, copied, transmitted, edited without degradation. Film photography was chemistry. Digital photography was mathematics. The 80s digital cameras were terrible, expensive, low quality, complicated. Professional photographers mocked them. 
Why would anyone want digital when film looked so much better? Fast forward to 2025. Film photography is a niche hobby. Every phone has a multi-lens camera system. We take billions of photos daily. Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, entire social media platforms built around digital photography. The 80s didn't perfect digital cameras. They proved the concept was viable. They showed that convenience eventually beats quality, that instant results matter more than perfect results, that shareability is more valuable than fidelity. Every selfie, every Instagram post, every digital image exists because someone in the 1980s looked at a 0.3 megapixel floppy disk camera and said, this is the future. They were right. Beyond the beeps and boops, software. The 80s taught the world that the program matters more than the machine. MS-DOS launched in 1981. Mac OS debuted in 1984 with the revolutionary graphical user interface. Lotus 123 made spreadsheets actually useful. Before this, computers were just hardware. The 80s established that software was the real product. Hardware was just the delivery mechanism. Apple figured this out first. The Macintosh wasn't about specs. It was about the user experience the software created. This shift created the entire modern app economy. Your smartphone is just hardware. The apps are what make it valuable. Cloud computing, SaaS businesses, the entire software industry operates on principles established in the 1980s. The concept of software updates, software licensing, software as a product separate from hardware, all 80s innovations. Bill Gates became the richest person in the world not by making computers, but by making the software that ran them. That's an 80s lesson the entire tech industry learned. Networking's infancy. Networking. The 80s introduced the concept that computers should talk to each other. Bulletin board systems, BBS, let people connect their modems and share files, messages, and software. It was slow, clunky, and absolutely revolutionary. The internet technically existed before the 80s, but it was academic and military. The 80s democratized it. TCP slash IP protocol became standard in 1983. That's the foundation of how the internet still works today. Domain names were invented in 1985. That's why websites have .com addresses. Email exploded in the 80s. People realized that instant written communication across distances was incredibly powerful. The at symbol became universal. The concept of usernames, passwords, online accounts, all established in this decade. Social media, cloud computing, online shopping, remote work, none of it exists without the networking infrastructure and concepts the 80s established. The internet got faster and prettier. The core architecture built in the 1980s. Sound and synthesis. Sound synthesis, the Yamaha DX7, Roland TR808, MIDI protocol. The 80s completely revolutionized how music was made. Before synthesizers went mainstream, you needed live musicians to make music. The 80s proved that electronic instruments were just as valid as traditional ones. The Roland TR808 drum machine was a commercial failure in the 80s. Too electronic, too synthetic. Then hip-hop producers discovered it. That distinctive 808 bass sound defines modern music. Hip-hop, EDM, pop, everything uses it. MIDI, Musical Instrument Digital Interface, launched in 1983. It let different electronic instruments communicate. This created the modern home studio. One person could now create entire orchestral arrangements. Every DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, every music app, Every electronic music genre exists because the 80s established that computers and synthesizers could make real music. The tools got more sophisticated. The foundation? Pure 1980s innovation. The enduring legacy. So there it is. The 80s weren't just about weird fashion and synthesizer music. They were about fundamentally reimagining humanity's relationship with technology. Personal audio? The Walkman started it. Personal computing, Commodore and Apple mainstreamed it. Gaming as an industry, Nintendo and Atari built it. On-demand content, the VCR proved it. Mobile communication, the brick phone pioneered it. Digital photography, Sony laid the groundwork. Software over hardware, the 80s established it. Computer networking, BBS and early internet protocols created it. Electronic music production, MIDI and synthesizers revolutionized it. Every piece of technology you use in 2025 has 80s DNA. 
We just miniaturized it, digitized it, connected it to the internet. But the core concepts, personal, portable, on-demand, connected, digital, all born in one explosive decade. Understanding this history isn't just nostalgia, it's predictive. The pattern is clear. Technology gets more personal, more portable, more on-demand, more connected. The 90s digitized the 80s concepts. The 2000s mobilized them. The 2000s 10s connected everything. The 2020s are making it all AI-powered and seamless. What's next? Same pattern. Next evolution. Whatever comes after smartphones will be more personal, more portable, more integrated into daily life. Augmented reality, AI assistants, brain-computer interfaces. They're following the exact same trajectory the 80s established. The future looks different. The principles stay the same. Want to predict what's coming? Look at what the 80s started and extrapolate forward. Now I want to hear from you. What's your favorite 80s tech memory? What do you think these innovations will evolve into next? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If this video changed how you think about tech history, hit that like button. Subscribe because we're diving into more decades of tech evolution. The 90s are next. And trust me, you won't believe how those innovations connect to today. Your smartphone exists because someone in the 80s imagined a better future. Time to honor that legacy.